Hello and welcome. In the last 48 hours, we've seen naked power play, leaked audio tapes of inducement of money, vulgar resort politics. One did not think it was possible, but in the last week, the dignity and the confidence of the people in the political system has further lowered. Welcome to new depths in the pit of Indian politics. We're a country today that's not worried about horse trading, but in fact, it seems to have gotten so normalized that people are actually finding it exciting and not dangerous. Now, the BJP president, Amit Shah, is known to be an admirer of Chanakya, the Maurya era philosopher who was one of the first proponents of real politic. Now, the term Chanakya Niti is often used by his admirers while describing his political strategies. Yet, what happened in Karnataka this week is perhaps better described by a different term from the lexicon of ancient Indian political thought, Matsya Nyaya, or the rule of the fishes, where the strong eat the weak, and there's no notion of morality, ethics, or obligations. Now, that is the subject of our discussion tonight. At what point does legitimate political strategizing cross the line into lawlessness? And where do the shenanigans of the Congress and the BJP fit on this spectrum? On the show today, we have from the BJP, Dr. Jaz Ilmi, and we have Vaibhav Agarwal. We have uh, Tom Vadakan of uh, the Congress, spokesperson for the Congress, Danish Ali, spokesperson of the JDS, Professor Neera Chandok, she is a political scientist. We have Nilanjan Mukhopade, journalist, author, and Prime Minister Modi's biographer. We have uh, Sanjay Hegde, he's an advocate with the Supreme Court, and we have S.Y. Qureshi, a former Chief Election Commissioner of uh, India. And also joining us from Washington, D.C., is Milan Vaishnav, he's a director and senior fellow of the South Asia program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Well, before we get to the larger picture of you know, what this election has shown us as a mirror to ourselves and what do we want for ourselves as a nation. I just want to get opening statements from uh, each of you about the political message or the main takeaway from this uh, Karnataka election. Mr. Elmi, for the BJP, is it that the party can't afford to be overconfident that if the Congress gets with regional parties, the BJP can be defeated? Well, every election uh, throws up its own possibilities. And the good part of a democracy is that uh, the entire essence of democracy is people voting to elect a government of their choice. And we have a lot of hyperbole during elections and all kinds of allegations are traded. But uh, it's ultimately about people wanting to elect and young aspirational India uh, needs a lot of good governance and, the, and their choice ultimately is the one that has to be respected. That is a clear sense of message for all elections. So how is this respecting the voice of the people when um, you had the other two parties, the JDS and the Congress, who was getting a majority after the post-polar alliance? Well, democracy with the Westminster system, we also have this situation where in the first past post, the smallest party, uh, my, my friend Kurt Danish Ali, with 37 MLAs, uh, they are the ones uh, in the uh, center siege, uh, they are on, on the hot seat of the chief minister right. and the second largest party supporting them and the largest party which is shot by seven seats is going to be sitting in the opposition. So this is also it's something... It's the same case in Manipur and Goa. Th this is something that... This is BJP what democracy is throws up. Seat. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Um, we'll uh, get to that. Mr. Vadakan, first then to you. What is the main takeaway for the Congress not to be wary of allies? Well, what has happened is this is the foundation stone of the forces that have stood up for secularism across the country. This is the opening up of the reality that India stands for. This is not about a power struggle that in Congress wants to succeed. This is about India, the largest story of India. We want to establish the right India, the, the India that we all have dreamt of. It is not the kind of narrative that is being given to us but, but it's a narrative really if you're of in, in a living position together. of power it is po yeah. so how do you get to that position of power i'm asking has this been a watershed moment for you because you had feelers from the jds even before right but the congress chose to ignore them and if you had tied up with them then you could have decimated the bjp so well, what has been the learning buts, point of this election but the whole issue is we did finally end of the story is that we have a good coalition partner. But we could have been saved all of this, this ugliness no, and dirtiness I'm, I'm, of the uh, past We week. could have been saved of all this, but this is a one, hand, a one hand playing the whole game. The entire establishment, was we were up against it. We were hunted down, haunted down, you name it, it all happened with us. We had to move our elected MLAs from state to state. And what was the wrong they committed? They wanted to vote for the party 
that they stood for, for the people they stood for. And that opportunity was, you call it Chanakya Niti, you call it whatever Niti, but that's not democracy. That's exactly what happened in Karnataka. It's a sad story and, and the story of democracy dipping so low has never been seen in free India, ever. Okay, but uh, Mr. Vatican, Congress is now down to three states. So are you now demonstrating, you think with Karnataka, you're demonstrating to allies that you're willing to go the extra mile, the Congress is willing to go that extra mile to take on the BJP? We is that the message that going ahead for the next three states that, that elections are coming up and 2019? Sir, we have done that before. You remember the Rajiv Gandhi days. We have signed accords. We have lost out. But when national interest comes, com Congress party does not compromise. This is mission to throw this dispensation out and restore to India the pride, the, ex uh, the, the reality of pluralistic India. That's our motive. Nanesh Ali, what is the message for the JDS that you, uh, regional parties, if you have to take on the um, Modi Shah duo, you're going to either have to unite or perish. That is what uh, it's happening in Karnataka. During elections of Karnataka Assembly, even before that, from the day one we were saying this, that Karnataka outcome of Karnataka election is going to change whole Indian politics. And Karnataka will be that taking off ground for the unity of opposition. And you will see that from day after tomorrow onwards, from Wednesday onwards, my after friend Shazia, my friend Ajaz Ilmi's party's countdown will begin. Enough is enough. People in this country are fed up with you now. And, the, and, 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 and that is why you, you will see on Wednesday but Mr. That Ali, whole opposition pa see no, I'm not you, but, 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 no, but Mr. That. Ali, Mr. Ali uh, what you have right now is a, per a person whose party has won 38 seats he now has the gumption to demand the chief minister's post and he's getting it and he's you know his attitude is walking around like he deserves it is that the vo voice of the people the mandate of the people see the mandate of the people was clear people did not want BJP to sit on the power seat they have given the mandate now in our democracy, according to the constitution, according to the conventions, if single party doesn't get the majority, then you have only two options. Either of the two parties comes together, numbers has to become, or you go for the fresh polls. So you can't, because BJP cannot say that, because they are demanding for one nation, one election, so they can't even demand for the fresh polls. And we cannot ask for the president's rule to, uh, from prime minister's office running the Karnataka. So there was no other option but to, two parties to come together. Which two parties can come together? Which are ideologically more closer to each other. Which can form some common minimum this program. This could have easily gone the other way. You could have easily tied up with the BJP too. No, no, no. How, that, because see, from why do you say ideologically together? Because the Congress had called you the, you know, the B party of uh, the BJP. They called you JDS stands for Sangh. JD Sung. See, in elections, because JDS and Congress were fighting for the same political space. Let us be very plain. Okay. Yeah. And they were, um, in, in during the election process, you know, in India, all political leaders, our prime minister says that I promised 15 lakhs to the common man that I will bring back black money within 100 days and I will give 15 lakhs to everybody's account. And they say it was just a jumla. But the point is there is no At political least space we have not left. Committed the BJP that is not leaving of, uh, political uh, space left unless no, you all tie up. Mr. Ali, then uh, coming here, was this in the end in hindsight a self-goal? Because with this blind obsession to get Karnataka, now what uh, the Modi uh, Shah combined has done is actually created real opposition unity. No, the opposition is bound, unity is bound to be there when, when the BJP is in power in 21 states. And geographically, in 80 percent of this, uh, 75 percent of, the, of India, and it, where 80 percent of the population r resides, it's obvious that the opposition parties will have to get together. It's going to be Modi versus the rest. We understand that. So we build up. A, we, we we also need to have uh, our own allies. We've lost an uh, important ally in Chandra Babu Naidu, but we need to work with with uh, uh, like-minded parties who don't uh, really enjoy the hegemony of the Congress culture, which is seen for a long time. On democracy, I must say that uh, my friends, uh, the new young Chanakyas, Tom, 
and especially Kumar Danish Ali, the other new Chanakyas who got together. Well, democracy has been alive and th thriving in this country. It doesn't start from Karnataka. It's every election is a process and a mandate for the people. And let's not forget 14 wars and uh, after the 16 elections that the BJP has won, it's won because the young voters and the voters wanted a change and wanted to give an opportunity for the BJP to form governments in those states. So even that was democracy and even this is democracy. Okay, Neera, uh, come in here. What is the main takeaway for you uh, from this election? You know, I'm seriously worried because if you read the, what happened, this ignoble spectacle in Karnataka along with the non-functioning of parliament in the, during the budget session, what we are seeing is actually loss of confidence in the ability of the legislature to debate, to discuss mm -hmm. and to make laws because now debate and discussion has been replaced by the politics of din and instead of lawmaking you have ordinances. Now this is a typical scenario for many countries in the post-colonial world to move towards an executive style of governance and that is something India must avoid. It's too large, too diverse too heterogeneous to be governed by one one person who is at the head of the state but legislatures are making themselves irrelevant and the spectacle the very ignoble unpleasant avoidable spectacle of you don't know whether the man or the woman you voted very few women in this election where they voted for is going to be bought over either by this side Correct. or by that side you, they are herded together, put into five-star resorts, said you make use of the bar, but you will not call. Their phones are taken away. I mean, what kind of a democracy is this? In the end, in the end, you are going to be replaced by, and it is happening. The executive is making laws. They are not making laws. And I think opposition parties should be wary of this attempt to suspend the functioning of all legislative assemblies. We are going to move from a parliamentary democracy into, uh, into a authoritarian executive form of government and that should be avoided. Political parties must learn to censure and to blacklist <laughs> anybody who is up for sale. They won't do it. Of course they won't. But that's a tragedy of parliamentary democracy. You can't threat socialists. You don't know where they're going to go. This okay. is not only Karnataka. It happens in Bihar also. Then, Mr. Qureshi, then what happens in, in such a case? Because we moved on where we coalition politics is here to stay. The, those That era of like one national party taking on another one is over. So what, what happens in a case where you don't, when you have one political party that hasn't gotten a majority, is the governor's job to call on the, the party with the largest numbers or the post-alliance party that has the largest numbers? What's yeah. the solution here? Yes. Yeah. Actually, two, three issues were thrown up in this uh, uh, recent uh, one week incident. Number one, the discretionary power of the governor. We have increasingly seen that the governor, the quality of governor that we have un unfortunately has come very, very low. Leaving anything to, to their discretion I has not must end. Why can't we make it a law? Now, for instance, it will be a commonsensical that the party with the largest uh, number should be called first. But since this was violated recently Correct. in three states, now set. what is the norm that we have? The, uh, no norm is the new norm. I will leave it to the governor. Now what discretion of the governor with this kind of uh, discretion which brings disgrace to the office? I mean uh, it's a matter of shame. Let there be the specific laws and secondly pre the election uh, coalition should become also the norm because uh, the, uh, as you said that otherwise the uh, voters feel cheated that they voted for one party but somebody else uh, is, uh, is the chief minister and vice versa. So let there be only pre-poll alliances and, uh, and which will, will be very easy because when the largest party is first given a chance and if they can form the government well and good otherwise the next combination can come forward. Okay, I hear someone saying yes agreeing vociferously with you sir. Are you, uh, you're, of, you're from Karnataka? Yeah, I'm from Karnataka. So yeah. uh, respond over here. Do the voters? What do the voters feel? Because we've had viewers, uh, panelists here saying the voters, See, voters have felt they cheated. Have got ideology, yeah, they have the interest to get some party, their own parties. They they have the trust on that party. So then later on, they after elect, uh, electing, they join to some other party. It 
uh, hurts the uh, general people. So you yes. feel cheated? You cheated, yes. It's an anti infection law. Okay, yes. we need, okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, are you also from Karnataka? Yes. But yes. respond over here, at some level, is this the governance that the people have voted for? Because, for example, in Bangalore, in a cosmopolitan city, the voter turnout was so low. So who do we have to blame? Do we also have to blame ourselves at some point? Yeah, of course. They are disappointed. Disappointed means in, a way in all the parties they have lost interest. That is the main reason, I think. And maybe that's a vicious circle. So you're disappointed, you don't go out to vote yeah, and then we blame is, them? That is their uh, choice. Hello. Go ahead, sir. See, you're also from Karnataka? Yeah, I am from Karnataka. One thing I want to say, in the present situation, what is happened is correct. Democracy is restored. This is one thing. Second thing is, see, <coughs> as you said, in Bangalore city, there is 56% voltage. In some areas of the Bangalore city, there was 28% voltage. In the Karnataka, there is 70%. See, the thing is, here, all the political leaders, election commission, everything, we need to educate the people, importance of voting, importance of democracy. Then only we can restore a good party, good majority. And one question, last one. I am asking the one question. The, see, in this whole four days drama, so out of 222 seats, 112 is the majority line. Yes. Uh, BJP got 104. Yes. Okay. All the BJP leaders, all the state leaders and central leaders, yeah, whenever you, they spoke on the media, they say, we have the mandate. We, uh, we have the right to ask for the forming government. <coughs> Where is the mandate? 104 is the, not the mandate. So, so the yeah, then you, you, they are correct. he's correct one zero four. They are okay. zero, diverting the people, no? One zero four so is not the complete mandate. Of the mandate. Okay. One zero four is not the complete mandate, but thirty seven is the complete mandate, and seventy seven is the complete mandate. I agree with you, sir. Totally. But thirty seven plus with you, sir. plus seventy eight. Right, totally agree with you. It comes to fifty seven percent of the people of. Fifty-seven percent of the people of Karnataka has voted against BJP, right. and they have voted. They have asked us that you should come together to form the government. Nobody that is the mandate. Nobody has asked you anything. May I say something? Can I go across to Sanjay? Yeah, Let's just get Sanjay and Mr. Mukhopad yeah. in. But Sanjay, the fact is, uh, you're, they didn't get a majority, but their both seats went up from 14 in the last election to 104. So is there, there's still a Modi wave. The, it has worked. The Prime Minister being there, campaigning in 21 constituencies, 31 rallies. In 2008, rallies. Mr. Yadurappa, who was then the Chief Minister, like Mr. Modi, 110. Yeah. So now, you with please ask with, with Modi, with Amit Shah, with here, there, everywhere, was there a Modi wave? They, it, it, that's neither here nor there. But I, I just have to take some issue with what uh, Ijaz said that, you know, the smallest parties come in this. Please, I'm not, I'm not no, 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 I'm, you, you I'm almost talked down, you almost talked down to the people of Karnataka. I'm there. saying it's a part no, of democracy. No, the point is this. When we go to vote, we vote for our individual legislators. The legislators together, the, we have, by our constitution, entrusted everything to the legislature. So the person who can command the confidence of the legislature becomes the leader of the house, and then there is a leader of the opposition. So please do not make it a presidential system saying this versus that. It is not a binary system. Mm. So there, Danish is to an extent right when he said that, look, the mandate was fractured. The mandate then compels parties to think which of us can work with which other. Mm. And that is how multiple voices are heard and represented in our democracy. To say that only one will speak and only one is righteous and the others are wrong, that is not what a parliamentary system is about. And, okay. now, and one more question that, uh, that the gentleman there raised, 104 was certainly not 112. It was almost like a boy saying that 35 is passing marks. I have got 32. <laughs> Please make me head boy, which requires everybody to be uh, pass. Three marks I'll manage somehow, grace marks somewhere somebody will give. This <laughs> Devregati kind of uh, situation is not what is contemplated by the constitution. Okay, Mr. Mukhopal, they come in there on the, you know, the, the Modi wave. How do you read the numbers? Many 
looking at these elections saying you know it's a watershed moment the uh, the opposition has finally come together it's given the congress that psychological push needed ahead of those crucial elections in those bellwether states mp chatisgarh and uh, and rajasthan you know, and 2019 trying to read the numbers let me try to tell you that how do i read the 19th of may i think it's a very decisive moment in the history of our parliamentary democracy uh, for the last four years, in another six days, it will be four years of the Modi government, 26th of May. For the last four years, this government has presided over a majoritarian thrust and uh, with populist support and autocracy, which is believed or told people that practices a democracy. Hmm. For the last four years, this government has, and the ruling party has assumed and told the people that we are not capable of doing anything wrong. Whatever we do, we are the ones who are the ones who make it, do it absolutely correct. Uh, this is a party which has been so confident of itself that it has, you know, made the other parties appear very defeated. Hmm. It is a very defining moment because in the last one day, we see a total transformation. The BJP for the first time is on a back foot. They have made mistakes earlier, but not of this scale. The Congress is today not the party of 2014. This is a party which is ready to snarl, which is a party which is ready to bite. For the next one year, we are going to see much more intense battle, a political fight which had not been seen from the period of 2012 to 2014, when Mr. Modi had a virtual walkover, first within his party, and thereafter, in the political terrain, there was absolutely no challenging him. It was just a clean walk. From yesterday onwards, it is going to be very difficult for the BJP. The first impact will be felt that uh, in the coming elections in uh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, three very crucial states, which are BJP states, which are going to face anti-incumbency of several years. It is going to face a challenge of a united opposition because the opposition, right from Mamta Banerjee to Devegora, everybody feels that there is sense to move towards another phase of a basic two-party system, despite the fact that you have various parties, it's essentially BJP, anti-BJP. It's very similar to the two-party system which was there in the Congress system. So you had the Congress and you had the non-Congress. So you had in 2014 a very low level of the index of opposition unity. In 2019, it's going to be very high. So the basic challenge for the BJP is would be to try to maximize its votes. The amount of votes which it got in 2014 will not work for it. 31%, 37% along with allies will not take it to even around 200 uh, mark. They will have to do but much more. Where does it get its vote from? It has a very condensating attitude towards allies. Look at the way as to why Chandra Babu Naidu. So the BJP has a huge a mountain to climb. It is going to be relatively easy for the opposition, but they cannot be complacent because there are fundamental contradictions within, within the, the opposition. So when you say the Congress is no longer the party of 2014, uh, is know, ready to snarl you know. and bite, isn't that the worry? If everybody is snarling and biting, we, what levels are we snarling and can biting just at? Come in for one minute. Okay, go ahead. I want to go to a minute. Yeah, yeah, so no, you uh, can uh, snarl and bite. You know, you can snarl and bite within parliamentary levels. We have had the finest of parliamentary debates in the Nehruvian and in the Shastri era. Even during <coughs> Mrs. Gandhi's time, we used to have very <coughs> fine, you know, debates. I still remember some of the finest rebuttals of the government by Mr. Vajpayee, but never has. The parliamentary d debate or, but no or one the public discourse. No one aspires to that anymore. That's discourse. the problem. You know, it's been led by, led by people right from the top. And I, history I, books I, are I, like I, to go I just to want to continue where he left off. What this reminds me is the situation of Rajiv Gandhi. Rajiv Gandhi had a 400 seat majority. Mm. He actually joked, I'll have to create my own opposition. But towards 1988, then he suddenly sank. Correct. And then even with a small opposition in parliament, People were not willing to believe you know, that aura of majesty has broken. You know, just to right. add to him. Uh, let's go across to Milan. Let's yeah. go across to Milan. Then Milan Vaishnav, join us in here. So this is that watershed moment, just as it was for Rajiv Gandhi in the past. The BJP has just got an overconfident, and now they have. It, this has been a self goal. Respond over here. Is the was the Modi wave actually working on the ground in Karnataka, or or is it waning? Well, I think uh, what you could say about the BJP is that uh, the Modi presence uh, 
uh, without which it probably would have done much worse. Uh, I think it tells you something that the man, the prime minister, four years deep into his government, still remains popular. And remember, when we turn our sights to 2019 and we have more of a presidential style campaign, uh, you can expect that factor to to weigh even more heavily on voters' minds. Having said that... But presidential uh, style means who is the candidate for the opposition? That's the crux. Well, I think that's, that's the crux. Mm. And I think uh, what the opposition hopes to do, and I think this is the lesson of Karnataka 2018, it's the lesson of uh, Bihar 2015, it's the lesson of the recent Uttar Pradesh bipoles, which is state by state to try to create uh, an anti-BJP uh, front, not necessarily at a national level, but to have strategic, calculated moves state by state. And that's clearly what uh, the Congress would like to do. But there is a big catch, which is in order to do that, the Congress party will have to subordinate its own ego, its own position in service of a common good. And let's face it, uh, the Congress historically has not been very good at playing second fiddle. So the question is, right. under the presidency of Rahul Gandhi, will the Congress adjust to this new role? And I think the jury is still out on that. Mr. Vadakan, come in over here. So in presidential style of election, whether you like it or not, is coming up. Who's going to be the candidate for the opposition? Well, I'm surprised that you accepted the presidential form of government. This is not acceptable to India. I mean, the condition... Rahul Gandhi himself said if you win the elections, he'll be the, he can be the uh, prime minister. Well, he said that. But the point here is, he said... I mean, if you ask him, he's the leader of the party. If I ask you, you are the anchor of the show, and would you continue for the next show? Obviously, you're going to continue. Now, the point here he's made is that he is ready to lead from the front. He, if he, he gets the numbers, it's all about numbers. If he gets the numbers, why not? But the issue here is larger. There is a larger agenda. The narrative has changed. The whole country is united. Karnataka is a gate which will teach the BJP the real India. See the real India. And that's where the beginning starts. 70 to 80 seats are going to be down in northern India. Where are they going to replace it? From South India. They are not entering Kerala. They are not entering Tamil Nadu. Mark my words on this. Where are the numbers coming? No, but now the question, the question <clears throat> that you asked, who will be the leader? That leader will be thrown up as based on the numbers but so the prime minister he, he touched at least 21 assembly constituencies bjp won only five in 2013 this time it's 112 it's rested six from the congress one from the jds so the prime minister if you're saying are they going to go into kerala the prime minister's you know modi wave or modi effect whatever you want to call it has worked to some extent no anti-incumbency really seen against Siddharamaya, but where the prime minister campaigned it's worked well that's uh, that's the uh, uh, that's the uh, uh, view that they are trying to sell. But I come from that state and I know what the situation is, the ground reality. He may make speeches and go away, but the reality is people of Kerala have their heads on their shoulders and they know whom to vote. That's a reality. So the point is they may make speeches and go. Speeches is what they specialize in. And this narrative of speeches, speeches and speeches, no action at the ground level. I mean, you can make huge promises. <laughs> They have Jumlas and Jumla. They are a Jumla manufacturing factory. And they do it state after state. They recycle Jumlas and present it. And then people are taken for a ride. And this business is ending with Karnataka. I, can I can have I a one-liner? <coughs> one one I am giving him a slogan. Bhashan acha deta hai. Shasan kaisa hai. All right, let Weber Vagarwal joins us. Uh, Weber, uh, want to get your takeaway. What was the message for the BJP from this Karnataka election? Uh, overconfidence, it's been called, uh, it has been overconfident. If the opposition unites, they can definitely defeat the BJP. And this is the self goal. You've been so focused on getting Karnataka at any costs. You're willing to do anything to get Karnataka that what you've done in the end is basically inadvertently created a united opposition. A self goal for Amit Shah and Prime Minister Modi. Good evening. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I was not able to come in just at the last minute, some changes. But uh, just to answer your question, no, that's absolutely not the right way just to set the record straight. Uh, Congress has been reduced to a party working on a PPP mode, which is what? Which is Punjab, Puducherry and Parivar. You know, let's look at it in a brighter perspective and a, and a larger perspective. I'm sure Tom Barakan would be raising eyebrows right now. I can see him looking around here. So, 
So, so you know that is what the so, PM said before this election. Yes, now you can't say that. Time. No, no, no. Absolutely. So the PM has had to use words on that. Why, why is it food on? Let's have fresh talking. lines. Allow me. Allow me to I say this. Sure. So Congress is not talking. But uh, is, but Weber, this is the first time in last four years. Keep. Pehli baar phas gayi Modi sarkar. No, no, no. I'll tell you. I'll tell yeah. you what is the real state. Uh, uh, Kumar Danishali. What Congress is not talking is Congress is not talking about losing the 12 states that we've taken away from them, but Congress is busy talking about uh, gaining nine seats. My friend, I mean, what a comparison! Something you need to study, uh, my friend, very uh, closely. Uh, you know, Historical Dhanishali reality you have missed out. But Dhanishali times have changed. Be, Move the time. Uh, Danishali would be very happy to talk about the 147 seats on which the, their deposits have been for uh, confiscated. Danishali would be very happy to talk of the 37 seats you have lost the deposit on. 36 in Karnataka. Okay, you know, okay. So, so BJP has not lost anything in Karnataka. In fact, BJP has proven its iron. This is election by, commission side. By getting, by getting seats okay. Okay. six seats All right. on. Lina, please come in here. What is the, you know you can this? It's always about spin. The BJP is, is not lost Weber anything now. in Karnataka. I says Weber. Very quick points to make. I think the Congress and the JD should stop preening. They might have got a chance to form the government, but at great cost. All three parties are complicit in demeaning democracy, in bringing it down to the lowest common denominator. Secondly, you know, I don't think the story ends with the Congress just willing to be another partner in a grand coalition against the BJP in 2019. There are far too many leaders who, throw, who are throwing their hat into the ring to become the prime minister. I mean, how are they going to decide the competing claims of various leaders? All of them aspire to be the, uh, the, the prime minister. Thirdly, you cannot have a viable front just on an anti-BJP platform. I mean, how negative can you be? We've had enough of this accusation of one party against another. What is mm. that that you have to offer the people of India, which the BJP doesn't mm. offer? The BJP is a right-wing populist party and by itself, populism promises everything to everybody. What is this federal front or na whatever they call themselves? going to offer to people which the which the bjp you can't run a campaign only attacking the bjp and likewise we've had enough of this much slinging frankly we are fed up i told, uh, Danish, yeah. I totally agree with you. Danish, respond how forget about the national level how are you going to sort out your relationship with the congress going forward the bjp actually all they needed to do was sit back let <coughs> let the congress and the jds come to power and then fall w under the weight of its own contradictions you don't worry, Sara. People were not you, uh, accepting when we initiated an alliance with Bahujan Samaj Party. Mm -hmm. People used to say, BSP under the leadership of Mayawati has never had any pre-poll electoral alliance with any political party. And she had an alliance with JDS. It's a small party, regional party in Karnataka and to an extent in Kerala. That is the whole story has gone wrong. People were not thinking that whether JDS and Congress will come together. In your all shows, all whenever, wherever I was participating during election, uh, uh, this thing, in various TV channels, everybody was saying all the so-called analysts, political pundits, oh, Kumar Swami is already fixed with Narendra Modi, the Chanakya, whatever Danishali you speak in this studio, Kumar Swami is already fixed by Narendra Modi and Amit Shah. What happened? Congress and JDS came together. We will have a common minimum program. We are going to run a coalition, very smooth coalition. Jab dil mil jate hain, to ye choti choti cheeze kuch nahi rehti. As far as Madam has said, who will be the leader in 2019? As Mr. Hegde said it correctly, we are in a parliamentary democracy. We are not in a presidential type of one. Whenever the situation has arise, arisen, the political parties of this country has I'm rise to, to accept decide. that. No, no, it, it, no, no, it, 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 ma'am, if you remember in 1996, we all opposition parties at that time, non-Congress, non-BJP party at that point of time, we sat in the Tamil Nadu Bhavan. Mr. Karuna Dev was there. Within half an hour, we decided who will be the Prime Minister and Mr. Deve Goda became the Prime Minister for that. They will decide yeah. by give and take and you scratch my back. Politics of opportunism. And, and, and in the end, the biggest loser will be the voter. Who we voted for is not going to be in power.
coalition government. That was the starting stage of coalition. Let me give Mr. Jaak a chance to respond and then Mr. Hegde, Mr. Mukhopadhyay. I must say this. Unless there is a narrative that the people of this country see a viable narrative about their livelihoods, agriculture, growth, industry coming up from 25 of these opposition parties, they're not going to buy it because you, I mean, who's going to accept Mamta? Somebody will not accept Mamta ji. Somebody will not accept Devogado ji. Somebody will not accept Mayavati. Somebody will not accept Akhilesh. So these things are going to be there. Need a proper narrative to come forward to the people and let the people of this country decide okay. whose narrative is better for their lives. So the BJP can sit lives. back yes. and Too rest quick. easy. Mr. Too Hegde, go points. ahead. More than a prime ministerial candidate, you need a glue to stick things together. Absolutely. You need a HKS Surjit. You need a, J a Jay Prakash Narayan. That, that is the greatness of India that come at the hour, come at the man. There will be a man. Don't worry about that. Yes. And the second part, what is the narrative? And I'll tell you what, as a Kanadega, as an Indian, what narrative I want to see. I want to see a narrative of people who tell me that you be not afraid. Do not be afraid of what you eat. Do not be afraid of whom you love. Do not be afraid of violence on the streets. We have had an arrogant <coughs> government which threatens violence through its goon squads. Please free us from that. You will have I India's disagree with them. I disagree with okay. them. Okay. Can I, can I, I, I want to Webber, about I'll go to Mr. Mukhopadhyay and then you. Like that. I, wonder. I, I want to just talk about this presidential system which we are talking about. You know, the, the, it, this is essentially a BJP trap and we should not fall into it. Hmm. Uh, we have had elections in the past which have not been presidential elections. The BJP has tried to presidentialize the election because it has a trump card which is a single individual. So obviously it is playing to its strength. But the, the challenge for the opposition party is not to fall trap and play according to the strength of the BJP, but play to the strength of Indian political diversity. Hmm. We have often said that Indian elections are not one election, they are 543 different elections. While this may be ma a matter of academics, but the point is that we have 29 different elections. You can either have a wave election in this country or you can have an aggregate of state elections. A wave elections is something which the BJP would want, but at the moment the BJP doesn't have an issue. In 2014, Modi was the issue, he was the wave himself. Today, Modi is not the wave, he cannot yes. be, you cannot yet he have a single thing for him to say that this is the reason yeah, why you should camera. vote me. Because there is not sufficient to claim as to what oh, has been so delivered in the last four years. So I do not see really that happening as far as the achievement of the government being converted into a kind of a wave. The, the challenge for the opposition parties is to fragment the elections into state aggregations and this is where the BJP is going to stumble very badly. Because the moment you start stamp, you know, uh, fragmenting the elections, you take out this entire question that who is your leader? We don't have to mm -hmm. have a leader. We have a leader in Bengal, we have Mamta Banerjee there. The strongest regional leader, the strongest leader who is posing the maximum challenge to the BJP in a particular state is the leader of the coalition in that state. That is the way the Congress and the other opposition parties. Okay, so if we're reading the tea leaves, right? Regional parties, small parties are going to be key. They're going to be yes, kingmakers. Yes, the Congress should provide given a platform for all of them to come together. Given be that, unanimous. Mr. Qureshi, Basically, do we need a stronger anti-defection law? Do we need an anti-defection law that actually has some teeth? Yeah. We had uh, a situation where the the uh, government's lawyers telling the Supreme Court that this doesn't hold because they haven't, the MLAs haven't taken their oath yes. yet. Mm -hmm. No, before uh, I answer your question, Sarah, about anti-defection law, I would like to comment on the debate of the last five minutes that the uh, coalition governments are now here to stay. Uh, regional parties are going to reassert themselves. I am reminded of uh, a famous quote from the British constitutional history. The parties have realized that if they don't hang together, they will hang separately. Mm. It's a question of their survival. For their survival alone, they'll come together, as has been That's demonstrated now. And that is the reason why uh, BJP's attempt to presidentialize the election will be countered by the, you know, the kind of a coalition uh, the, um, uh, partnership, which is uh, going to stay. The anti-defection law has to be made stronger because uh, well, even now, uh, thanks to the anti-defection law, the threat that if you defect, you will be thrown out and you will have to recontest an election. But uh, last one week, 10 days, we were hearing all the time that these guys will be offered uh, the temptation that if you quit now, we will bring you back through the MLC route. 
So therefore, you will lose nothing, and on top you can pocket twenty, thirty, fifty crores. All this has to hundred crores was the rate it seems. Hundred crores, hundred crores. You know, this Thank is uh, the dirtiest phase that we have seen so far in politics, and uh, we need to correct it. And finally, I would like to say you have been mentioning from the beginning Chanakya. I don't think we should give we shouldn't give Chanakya a bad name. A bad he was a, the shrewd mm -hmm. strategist and tactician, but he was, he didn't play dirty politics the kind which we are observing morals. these days. We, let's not give him a bad name. It okay, was a long -term Milan, Milan, Milan. Let's just get a reaction from you, Mr. Mukhopadhyay, saying that the Modi wave is no longer existent uh, as it was in 2014. Well, I think what the BJP is going to try to do is exactly as Mr. Mukhopadhyay said: is they're going to try to nationalize the election. Now, it's up to the opposition whether or not they are going to play to that. But I think what Modi is going to do is say, look. You've given me five years to undo 65 years of history. Uh, I've made a down payment. I need more time. Uh, I've taken the boldest action on black money uh, in, in independent India's history. Uh, we've had no major corruption scandals. We've laid the foundations of a modern welfare, welfare state. Of course, then the nationalism card will be played. Now, it's a question whether or not the voters will buy it. But I think we're seeing the construction of a very layered type of approach because the economic narrative that the BJP wanted to have in 2018, 2019 is simply not there. A few years ago, they thought they would have eight plus growth. They would have sub 3% inflation. They would have shrinking uh, fiscal deficits and trade deficits. They would have a, a revival of investment cycle and massive job creation. And we know that those realities have not uh, borne fruit. So therefore, they are coming up with a with a sort of layer cake strategy that is going to make Modi the centerpiece, but it's going to have different levels. We shouldn't look for binary. Is this about Vikas? Is this about Hindutva? It's going to be all of the above. Okay. Um, uh, Vaibhav, come in over here. Milan says that the, B, the Prime Minister Modi is going to say in 2019 that, look, there'll be no major corruption scandals in my term. Hasn't the whole Karnataka episode severely dented that for the BJP? No. Uh, I'm very amazed that people are, not, uh, people are not seeing the other side of the coin. You know, if, if I was to share with you, let's look at it this way. That, you know, everyone's talking about regional parties. Milan just pointed that out. Uh, our senior journalist Mukhopadhyayji pointed it out. And, uh, uh, and everyone's talking about it. You've been talking about it. You know, let's look at it this way, that the regional parties were always there before as well. They've competed in their own regions, very categorically I'm saying regions, and, and fought against us and have lost before as well. For example, Chandra Babu Naidu will not come and fight in UP, or, or Mamta Banerjee will not come and fight in UP or go to Hyderabad and fight. I mean, so, so the regional parties are not really his friend. The fight ultimately is a bipartisan fight, which is basically the Congress versus the Bharatiya Janata Party led by Narendra Bhai Modi and Amit Shah. You know, so there is no two doubt about Weber, it. Weber, you will they, not even sustain I mean, the coming together of SP and BSP in UP. No, no. You is, forget uh, other, other states. Umar, you are going to you come down minimum 60 seats in UP there. from 73 to 13. Gorakhpur seat and the by-election that have happened, <laughs> you're miscalculating the over antics and you're going on the optics of the entire story. You're not understanding this is politics and we are we must be playing some politics in the back end. Oh, you know, again mean, you're challenging. Like why politics. are you pumping your chest? Okay. Don't pull uh, the Tom Vadakan, what I'm sensing here is a confidence in the BJP that the Congress is not going to be able to work with regional parties. Well, That's until the yesterday, they have the confidence in Karnataka also, Sara. Why you forget that? Uh, this till 3 o'clock, they were having the confidence. <laughs> See, this kind this of still the uh, dream party, merchants Anishali, have always existed in this country. Seat. They have you sold dreams and now they are dreaming that we can't join hands with the regional party. They are far from mistaken. Regional party has regional representations and we give them the highest respect. Now, the point here is... If they believe that we can't continue with the regional parties, they are living in a dream, <laughs> uh, dreamland. We have no, united I'm with the JDS as a standing example of what we have done. We'll do it elsewhere too. And we'll believe me, you, we, 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 will have a vision, we will have a vision of each state and the state's interest in mind before forming but this is a not complete state election. national state vision. Okay. Okay. I've heard this before, I've heard this before, heard before but let's not forget for a simple reality also is that for the last four years, <clears throat> a large section of people and the media have been saying that the Congress party and its leadership has been one of the biggest allies of the BJP party. 
So a lot of be depends on how the Congress party behaves with the regional allies. So let's see, let's see how it plays out. The BJP obviously has this road cut out that they will be seeking re-election on the basis of their programs. And if they've managed to uh, <coughs> fulfill the aspirations <coughs> of a large section of people and made their lives better, they'll go on but that But no way. corruption <coughs> taken a big hit. <coughs> Absolutely. You're not going to be able to... So you admit... What? That the, the plank of saying that this party is not corrupt unlike the others is not going to work in 2019 well, because of what's uh, happened uh, well, in Karnataka. People will decide whether they've seen 2G so from scams, where the corruption 4G scams, from or coal scams. The people, the people will corruption. decide. No CAG, the people no RTI, the media is there. no Lokpal, the media, no The Lokpal. media is alive. From where? We are Aray, sitting here. The media is not allowed to even enter the scam, the media is not the scam. What are you are talking? Why will the media be quiet? The media, there is no there's investigation there's, in the, the place. Media do his job. Is the media will do his job. No, no RTI. is not there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Hegde, he's got his finger up quietly, so let's give him a word and then go in for a break. Simple. We have seen in Karnataka that they went with the reddies. There were the reddies. The MLAs were not willing. Therefore, you had no specific performance. That was a legal pun anyway. Doesn't matter. All right. Let's, on that note, let's quickly go in for a short break and uh, get closing arguments on the other side. Welcome back. You're watching We the People. We have some audience wanting uh, to speak uh, speak up. Yeah. Uh, my question is to all the political parties. We have anti-defection law. Uh, everything, good uh, rules, regulations, pre-poll, post, uh, after polls also. But everything putting aside, all the politicians, political leaders, they are like practicing monkey jumps kind of thing and I'm really worried that each one of us voters we are feeling very insecure very insecure to whom we need to like vote and what are the okay. solutions let's and take that as a closing solution? argument from everyone one quick response so this is to the Congress the birds of different feathers will be flocking together but each bird's flight is different how are you going to manage it? It's going to be a lull before a storm. Okay. One last pass it on. Uh, uh, so, uh, I think, uh, isn't it, uh, we are only talking about how uh, uh, th this is an end of uh, the BJP government, but what we are forgetting is uh, we've, uh, the, the BJP has uh, managed to gather 21 states, uh, and it, it might be just an aberration in a series of successes. That how are we so confident that uh, 2019, uh, Karnataka will be the end of it? Okay. Are we, are we not heading towards like 1971, where opposition who had that? Indra Hatao and the Indra had the Garibi Hatao. Are we not heading towards the 2019? Possible. Possible. Okay. Let's get closing arguments. Um, uh, Milan, first to you. Uh, is it just stupid to be lamenting the state of affairs, the falling <laughs> standards of morality that we're seeing in politics today? That is the reality. You need real politics to take on real politics. Well, I think one of the things, Sarah, we haven't spoken about at all yet is, uh, you know, this Karnataka soap opera would be highly entertaining if it didn't so effectively shine a light on democracy's underbelly. Despite all of the rhetoric we've heard, money power does not look diminished. We have what was one of the most expensive state elections uh, in recent Indian history. Correct. We have the return of the Reddy brothers. Yes. We have tens of crores pledged to would-be defectors. We have 97% yes. of incoming MLAs from Karnataka who are crorepatis. 50% of them are worth 10 crores or more. So all of this, I think, speaks volumes about the double speak of cleaning up money in politics. The blame is on the government, but it's also on the opposition. In this, uh, every party is an equal opportunity offender, and I wish we could talk more about that. Sanjay, who will do the cleaning up? Everybody stands to gain by this. 16 of the new MLAs are, have, are worth more than 100 crores. It's the easiest way to make a quick buck in India. Just go into politics. Yeah, those with 100 crores will, will probably end up making 200 crores. They, that's the way, that's the, way uh, the cookie crumbles. And unless you finally come down to state funding of elections mm. and strict monitoring, yeah, this, uh, this is what, uh, what you'll get. Because unless 
governments decide that clean elections with people not having to stretch their hands out uh, uh, is a necessity for democracy in this country. You will, you, you will just not have clean elections. Mr. Mukhopadhyay, is it going to get worse now going forward? We thought this was the pits, but we have three big states. We have a general election coming up. Is it going to get worse? You know, the role of money power is definitely not going to diminish. You know, that is something that we are fairly clear about. But I just want to say, you know, that how, what is the roadmap kind of ahead, you know. I think the opposition has to be very clear that Wednesday when uh, Mr. Kumar Swami takes oath along with his cabinet, whichever is there, that is not the end of this chapter, but it's the beginning of a yeah. new chapter, a much more challenging chapter. The opposition must concede that they have not worked half as hard as the BGP and Mr. Modi have worked over the last almost 10 years. Mr. Modi, whether we like it or not, has this tremendous capacity to actually break his back to achieve power. He's a person who, who is completely dedicated to pursuit of power. That kind of At hunger, all costs? which is, <coughs> it's, you know, to, to achieve power and that kind of hunger for power, I do not see it primarily immoral. I do not see it. But it has to be scrupulously played. It has not been scrupulous so far in the last four years or even before that. But the rules of the game can be changed by the opposition parties. I am sure that the voters are going to look for parties which are more scrupulous than the other ones. N Neera, this hunger for power is not immoral. It's what you need to win in a country like India. Closing of course argument. it's important. I think in fact we the people of India have to take a pledge that we are not going to vote again for a candidate who has jumped ship and who will shift it to the other party. I mean this is we have to take it up because political parties are not doing anything about it. But more importantly, I think all political parties have to sit down and put on their thinking caps if they have any. What, are, what do they have to offer citizens of India? As of now, we are not being offered anything except minor tinkering with whatever is going on mm -hmm. economically, socially, culturally, politically. I don't see anything new coming onto the horizon of Indian okay. politics and that Mr. is Mr. Qureshi, tragedy. quick closing argument. What's the solution? You know, the, the first of all, I would not say that hope is any strategy that people will conduct themselves, political parties will behave. <coughs> we must have institutional checks. And one yes. institutional check which I suggest, uh, which you uh, mentioned earlier, anti-defection law. Here the possibility is that somebody for 100 crores defects and he is allowed to contest again in two months and he comes back. They disqualify him for six years and then see the difference. Mr. Elmi, <coughs> um, the, the BJP set the trend with what happened in Goa and Manipur and, and these other states and now it's only going to get worse. Well, uh, it's very clear, Goa, they were the fact, it was a fractured mandate. We tied up with two other regional parties. In Manipur and Meghalaya, we tied up with two, three and four regional parties. It is about the power sharing arrangement to form a government is also about ceding space to other parties representing aspirations of different areas, regions and castes. So unless you have, a, if you have a hegemony, then but only you don't the Congress believe the Congress and the JD will be able to do that. Quick one, Mr. Yeah, Bhatkam, would you I like to do it? I just want to answer that question in, uh, that Rishi that seconds, raised. Well it was Rashtrapati uh, Raj Bhavan politics that they played in Goa and other places. Be it me. But I have a suggestion to make. Election Commission can proactively when the code of conduct is in place, ensure that the government agencies, I repeat, government agencies like, I, uh, like IT, uh, your uh, ED, should not get into the business of this monkey business of okay. pandering to the okay. leadership. Since you're actually giving us a solution, we're giving you time to complete. That's a yeah. good yeah. point. Yeah. Whatever happened, I think we can say whoever's won or lost this discussing no, political I'll, game I'll, I'll in Karnataka, it's clearly the what average Ajaz voter has who has been the about loser. Goa and completely Manipur. out of time. It, 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 it is just like we the people, it's important that you all speak up. It's also important that you listen to others. That is what the BJP is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much all for joining us tonight.